Hi guys and welcome to the latest episode in my cancelled game series. This time we're looking at 20 unreleased Nintendo GameCube games and it's your first two-parter. So there'll be 10 games in this video and another 10 in a video coming up soon. As to be expected, the 6th generation consoles have an abundance of cancelled games and the GameCube is no exception. The shortlist I made before settling on these 20 was absolutely massive and I'll be covering both console exclusives and multi-platform releases. Although admittedly my GameCube doesn't get much attention these days, I did own one at launch and I think it's a fantastic little console. The design of the console itself is excellent visually and it has one of the most comfortable controllers ever made and has some top-notch exclusives. And the most appealing aspect was of course the relatively low price. But as good as a console's game library is, there are always a plethora of unreleased games that we never got to play. So join me as I take a look at the first 10 of 20 of those cancelled games. StarCraft Ghost was a planned GameCube, Xbox and PS2 entry in Blizzard's StarCraft series, set in a distant sector of the universe in 2499. In contrast to the usual real-time strategy gameplay of the series, Ghost was to be a stealth third-person shooter. The story follows Nova, a Terran psychic espionage operative, aka a ghost, which is the game's namesake. The Imperial Terran Dominion, for whom Nova works, are engaging in a secret military project and the game's plot involves a conspiracy surrounding this, although the full details are unknown. Gameplay focused heavily on stealth and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Although a variety of weapons were at the player's disposal, the use of unarmed combat was encouraged as a means to remain covert. Nova also had a variety of gadgets, a cloaking device, thermal imaging goggles and an EMP device with which to disable electronics. The enemy AI sounds pretty advanced too, with enemies searching and even laying traps if alerted to Nova's presence, and they would even fire their weapons randomly in the hope of disrupting Nova's cloaking device. As a ghost agent, Nova had various powers as well, such as the enhancement of speed and agility. Numerous familiar vehicles from the StarCraft franchise were present in the game, several of which the player could pilot. StarCraft Ghost's cutscenes were pretty impressive too. Blizzard's cinematics team, which was originally created to produce StarCraft's cutscenes, were tasked with creating the cinematics for the game. Announced in 2002, it was initially being developed by Nihilistic Software, then in 2004, Swingin' Ape Studios took over the project. The planned GameCube version was cancelled in 2005, and development halted altogether in 2006. A novel based on Nova's backstory called StarCraft Ghost Nova, which at first was intended to be released in tandem with the game, was published in 2006 after development was indefinitely postponed. The reason behind its cancellation is most likely the intended release date of 2005, so with the Xbox 360's release looming, Blizzard thought it wasn't worth doing, and the resources needed to shift development to the next generation of consoles was simply too great. Dead Phoenix was one of the Capcom 5, no, not a quintet involved in an elaborate video game heist, but a set of five Capcom games that were planned GameCube exclusives. Unfortunately details about the game are thin on the ground, but it was to be set in a mythical world populated with demons, dragons and other mythical beasts. The player character can fly using wings reminiscent of Icarus, and the gameplay field seems to be considerably open, although even the true genre of Dead Phoenix is unclear. Despite the lack of information, it certainly looks intriguing and potentially good fun. I'm not sure why it was cancelled, but perhaps the plans for the Capcom 5 were a little bit ambitious, and, like Icarus, Capcom flew too close to the sun with this one. A GameCube sequel to the N64's filthy adventure Conker's Bad Fur Day was planned, titled Conker's Other Bad Day. Development started in 2001 after the first game was published, with a plot that followed Conker's brief stint as king. After he spunks all the kingdom's money on drinking and prostitutes, he's tossed into prison and the game begins with his escape from his cell in the castle tower. The main antagonist was to be Cthulhu, a quote, massive space poo, and the game would see old characters return as well as introduce many new ones. The footage on screen is obviously of the N64 original, as there isn't really anything floating around online, but they did work on the storyboards and do some concept art for the sequel. 
Rare was bought by Microsoft and the developers struggled to find anyone at Microsoft interested in releasing the game and they tried even into late 2004, just before Conquer Live and Reloaded was released on Xbox in 2005. Kirby Adventure was a planned platform game first announced at 2005's E3. Although gameplay was a side-scrolling platformer, the levels were rendered in 3D. Kirby was able to ride on other players' backs in a co-op mode that supported up to four simultaneous players and could obtain special abilities from friends or foes. Despite this E3 trailer looking fantastic and the game seemingly being well into development, Kirby Adventure was strangely absent at the following year's E3 conference. The developers have since stated that there were three Kirby games intended for the GameCube that ended up in limbo and sadly Kirby Adventure was one of them. Absolutely nothing happened until years later at E3 in 2011 when a new Kirby game was announced for the Wii, at the time simply titled Kirby Wii. This turned out to be the almost identically named Kirby's Adventure, although it was released as Return to Dreamland in North America, which was essentially the final version of the original game in development for the GameCube. Diddy Kong Racing Adventure was a planned GameCube sequel to Diddy Kong Racing on the N64. Longtime viewers of the channel will know that Diddy Kong Racing is one of my favourite games on the console, so it's saddening to see a follow-up never made it to the cube. I learned from P2P Online, who also gave me these clips, that the game was pitched to Nintendo at some point in 2004. The story saw Wizpig returning for a rematch against Diddy Kong and his mates, racing on various customizable land, sea and air vehicles, much like the original. The game consisted of 16 villages, which were themed after Donkey Kong Country characters, and each had three courses played both forwards and in reverse. I mean you went round the course backwards, not literally reversed round the track. Diddy Kong Adventure built upon the foundations of the first game, adding some interesting new features. Each character was to have their own special attack, and the customization options for the vehicles were more elaborate, and included upgrades that allowed the player to access previously hidden areas. In addition to the original cast, several other rare cameos were considered, including Conker and Banjo-Kazooie. Sadly, Microsoft bought Rare before the game could be developed, leading to numerous licensing issues with the game's characters. A real pity, as this is a sequel that I would have loved to see. Donkey Kong Bongo Blast is another racer in the Donkey Kong family of games and was announced at 2006's E3. The game involves DK flying through the air with the aid of jet-propelled pair of bongo drums. The original concept was that the player would control Donkey Kong by using the GameCube bongos, and as you can see on screen here if you look at his hand movements, the jet engines were controlled by the left and right bongos, which steered, and rolling both drums would accelerate. The game was scrapped pretty quickly and development moved to the Wii. This was probably due to the idea being a bit bizarre, and how many people actually owned the bongos back in the day anyway. It seemed like a rather narrow target audience. And anyway, the concept was far better suited to the Wii. The game ended up being released on the Wii in 2007 as Donkey Kong Barrel Blast, with the Wii Mote and Nunchuck doing the steering in place of the bongos. Armada is a futuristic space shooter released in late 99 for the Dreamcast, exclusively in North America. It's a really interesting game actually and pretty fun, so it's a shame we never got it in Europe, as there's nothing else quite like it on the console. You pilot your spaceship across the universe, taking part in missions and battling an alien race called Armada who have destroyed Earth, awarding you credits with which to upgrade your ship. A sequel called Armada 2 Exodus was in development originally for the Dreamcast and then for the GameCube, PS2 and Xbox. It seemingly had a four year development process before being cancelled, during which time it was known by various names including Armada 2, Armada's Revenge, Armada 2 Star Command and Armada 2 Exodus. Due to the developers having limited resources, the sequel was scrapped after several delays and design rebuilds. Dead Rush was planned for the GameCube, PS2 and Xbox, being developed by Treyarch and to be published by Activision. An open world action game, Dead Rush has been described as GTA with zombies and takes place in a town where an earthquake has killed most of the residents. The town is now overrun with the undead, and the player character Jake is suffering from amnesia and endeavours to find out exactly what's happened. 
Various vehicles were available to drive, which also acted as protection against the zombies, and they could be upgraded and even built from scavenged parts of other damaged vehicles. Dead Rush was first announced at E3 2004, which is where this Xbox footage was shown, but was cancelled a short time later. Kid Ninja Spirit of the Dragon, an action platformer from Asylum Entertainment, was heading to the GameCube PS2 and Xbox in 2003. The player controls Jet, a young modern day ninja, on a quest to fight the Dragon Master and his band of warrior monks. Jet was trained in a variety of martial art disciplines by a ninja warrior spirit called Kuma, as you do, and has several ninja-like gadgets at his disposal that would be right at home in Batman's utility belt. Kid Ninja was eventually cancelled and there were rumours of a planned Wii version, but that never materialised either, although many have remarked that the released Wii game, I Ninja, bears a similarity. Ravenblade was to be a GameCube exclusive developed by Retro Studios. An action-adventure game, it was set in a reportedly huge world populated with strange beasts and mythical creatures. From the poor quality gameplay footage available, we can see that it was almost a hack and slash affair with swordplay that was modelled after real martial arts, combined with magical attacks. Ravenblade boasted incredible graphical effects and awe-inspiring music. As the trailer and development footage show, the game was well underway, but the graphical assets were far from complete, but this was enough to inspire Nintendo to approach Retro Studios and ask them to develop Metroid Prime. They obviously jumped at the chance to work on the next instalment in such a well-regarded Nintendo franchise and scrapped several games on which they were working, including Ravenblade. So those were the first 10 unreleased GameCube games we'll be looking at. Let me know what you think of the games on show here and stay tuned for part 2 coming in the next week or two and thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more unreleased games, you can find the other videos in my cancelled game series in this playlist. Meow.